Remington video, um, Remington versus Howe video. This is the Howe that was in that video. It was only a barreled action at the time. Pardon me, just coffee. Um, I got it as a barreled action. I didn't get it as a complete rifle because at that time, um, the what was available as far as stocks were concerned was not too crash hot. These days, the, you can get these in, you can even get in Bell cars and stocks, some of them, which is, you know, and previously in, um, I think the long range video, I said that how do not put their rifles in Bell and cars and stocks. They do with some of them now. Okay. So yeah, that's changed. Lovely. You can get, ah, oh, you can get all the different stock setups for the Howards now. It's just amazing. Here in Australia, you, pr you could probably get it in the United States for a long time, but here in Australia, it was very limited. But um, I don't know, maybe Howards are becoming a lot more popular now. Well, I don't know why they went, you know, popular years ago. But anyway, let's see. Reading off a board again. Uh, and I've got some synthetic light, artificial light, so yeah, it's a bit problematic. But uh, so we've got the Howard 1500 Varmint, stainless Varmint. And I've got it as barreled action in 243. And you can also get it in 204 Ruger, 22, 250, 223, and 308. It's a 24 inch barrel. Um, so the short, it's a short action varmint rig, uh, barreled action. Uh, and it cost $850, which compared to some of the other deals that you can get, the Howard deals that you can get is sort of, yeah. Maybe a little bit expensive, but it's stainless. You're paying for stainless, pretty much. All the stainless stuff that Howe makes costs a fair bit more than the than the blued actions. Uh, let's see. Like, you can buy the this new Howe HLR, I suppose it stands for Howe Long Range or something, in a Bell and Carlson stock in 6.5 Creedmoor or 308 for about a thousand bucks. At the moment, there's a deal on it at the moment online for a thousand bucks. That's just yeah, I don't think you can really beat that. It's not a stainless, but you know, still. Uh, let's see the specs. Yeah, it's a 24 inch barrel, heavy barrel. Uh, it's got a recessed target crown. And uh, all together with everything on it, it weighs just a bit over 10 pounds. So it's, you know, it's a heavy rig. It's not, again, you're not gonna be trudging the field with it. I mean, you know, if you, especially if you're a wimp. Sorry, sorry for all the wimps. Sorry. Uh, let's see. The changes that I've made to it, well, I didn't really... Putting it, putting it in, a, in a Boyd stock wasn't really a change because it didn't have a stock. Um, the reason I put it in this thumbhole stock is because there wasn't a whole lot... Of, when I bought it, which is a little while ago now, I had it for quite a while, and I haven't done a review of it for various reasons, um, because I was doing stuff with other guns. But um, there wasn't a whole lot of choice around, and also I'd never had a Bell and Carlson before. But when I got the 700 long range and saw what a yeah, what a nice piece of work the Bell and Carlson is, I'd put this in a Bell and Carlson. Yeah, like this was how much is the Boyd's? 270 bucks. You can get it online here in Australia. That stock now for about you know a couple hundred bucks more, you can get a Bell and Carlson. And the, the problem with these laminate stocks is that they chip. They are solid. They are hardy. You know, they're very stable. You know, that's one of the really good things that they're, because they're laminated, they're a very stable unit, but they do chip. And yeah, not that I give it rats, you know, but it's got chips in it. But anyway, with the Bell and Carlson, because it's of its composite nature, it's very, very tough. Yeah, so I, I, if, if I had my druthers, I'd put it in a Bell and Carlson, but anyway, it is what it is. So now what? Um, let's so I'll put it in a thumb hole, board thumb hole stock. Um, and as I've said before, one of the first things that I do to, you know, 
high power rifles anyway. Um, except for the Ruger Scout, I've never changed the trigger on the Ruger Scout because I just didn't. It's a nice trigger, actually. Um, and it's a very simple trigger, like the the way that Mauser's triggers are supposed to be, really simple. Um, so I put a Timney in it. Now uh, the Timney was what it was, it cost you two hundred and thirty bucks, and. I know people say, oh, look, the Howard trigger, there's nothing wrong with it. You just need to cut the spring and rah, 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 give it to you, you know, for a couple of bucks, you, your gunsmith will, you know, tune it up and, re oh, look. You know what? Once you try a Timney, um, what's that? Once you go black, you don't go back. Well, once you try a Timney, you don't go back because, what you know, I've got a few different brands of Centrefire rifles, and I know the Timney product. It's an excellent product, and I just get it straight away. You know, save a few bucks, get a Timney, put it in. You know, no problems. You muck around with a trigger, with 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 a stock standard factory trigger, and something happens. Guess what? I don't like your chances in court. Okay, that that's just one point. But just the fact that the Timneys are so good, they really are, you know. I don't give a rat's ass what anyone says about, you know, working on factory triggers. Just get a Timney and be done with it. Unless you're really tight, unless you're really strapped for cash and can't afford it and whatever, get a Timney. That's my advice. Uh, let's see, I'm sweating like an absolute hog because it is getting really hot. I wanted to do this video earlier in the day, like really early in the morning, but unfortunately my neighbour is not an early riser and his chickens were just carrying on like crazy because they'd obviously laid eggs and they just wouldn't shut up. So I've had to wait till it's heated up and now I'm sweating like crazy. Yeah. Uh, because I do live, you know, in a hot part of the country. Let's see what else. Uh, one of the things that I do um, is, and there's nothing wrong with the bottom metal on the howlers. It's, it's, it's a, it's a, it looks it doesn't look cast it looks like a forged stainless unit it's all stainless really good quality uh, i know I've, I've seen videos where people well, one person anyway has, has said that he's had trouble with the internal magazines on the house i i can't really say anything about that because i just change them i put a an aics actually it's a national you know compatible bottom metal in my house um this is this is an, an Atlas Works DBM um, AICS patent bottom metal. It costs what does it cost? One hundred and sixty-five bucks. Um, yeah, Atlas Works. Buy a lot of stuff from them. Have a look at their website. It's A T L A S W R W O R X S. Yeah, real weird. I'm not sure why they did that, but they spelt it. They changed the spelling on their website. Which is why I couldn't find it for a little while. Um, so yeah, but yeah, Atlas Works has got a lot of um, alloy bottom metals. It's it's anodized alloy, um, and you and you get an ex, you get an extra catch because the catches do wear out a little bit from use and pin and spring and yeah, it, it, quality item and worth. Well, one thing about the bottom metals, the the, the all of them because on the Ruger I've got a, a I actually said that I had a, an a. a I can't remember what, yeah, a DBM Systems bottom metal on my Ruger. It's not a DBM Systems bottom metal on my Ruger, Scout. It's a CDI bottom metal. So, sorry for DBM for saying what I said about your bottom metal on the Ruger. It's it's not, it's a it's a CDI, it's another company. I don't know, there's probably one factory making a lot and they're all brand different, but anyway. So, but one thing you've got to watch out with these bottom metals is that, um, Regardless of the fact that you have got an Accurious International um, compatible type bottom metal, not all the Accuracy International compatible magazines will work in it. And it, re, with regards to the magazine with the, the release latch, um, for instance, I'll just take my glasses off because I can't see anything close up with glasses on. It's a bit strange, but... Yeah. Uh, this is an accurate mag. It's a 20 round accurate. It, actually, it's the Ruger. Ruger. There. This is off the Scout. This is off the Ruger Gunsight Scout. It's actually, and it's got on it, 
Accurate Mag. So really good buy their magazines from Accurate Mag. This magazine, not a problem. You could hear that. That's, that's, yeah. So that works no problems in the DBM systems. But in this stock, yeah, it probably depends on what stock it's in. Because the, those, there's, there's probably like, I don't know, thousands of, of, an, of an inch difference. This is, an, this is a five shot Accurate Mag and Accurate Mag. That, uh, let's see. Yep, you heard that. That works. What's this one? This is a five shot Accuracy International, proper in Accuracy International five shot mag, steel mag. Yep, that one works. Now, this is a 20, a, a 10 shot. Uh, it's the wrong caliber, sorry. But in any case, that's, that's a 10 shot accurate mag. In there. Where are you? Doesn't go. Uh, that's this is. Well, that's a two two three, but they're all they're all the same magazine. Uh, this is a three oh eight Ruger five shot, which doesn't even work. Yeah, in my Ruger. No, won't go. That's a th that's a three oh eight mag. Accurate. Oh, I'll just get some sweat. So, out of, out of four different 308 mags that I've got, Accuracy National mags that I've got, there's only three that work. Um, now, so, and the same with the Ruger. There's only like a couple of mags that work in that, even though, so, I think it really depends on what stock you've got the, the bottom metal in. And I, like, if I, if I get a, a barreled action and I put it in a stock and I buy the bottom metal and I put the bottom metal in, sometimes it just drops straight in and there's no problems and everything fits. That's not always the case. So I will give it to my gunsmith and give him the magazines that I intend to use and say, these are the magazines that I want to use in it. Um, so that he can make sure that that catch works. You know that that release latch actually catches on the on the on the catches on the magazine and keeps them in place. Otherwise, you know, you'll be shooting and the thing will just drop out. Now, all right, so I've just gone off the track there with bottom metals. Um, let's see the bipod. The bipod is not an Atlas bipod. It looks like an Atlas. It's not. It's what I call a chatless. It's a Chinese ripoff. Um, here in Australia, for that for that bipod, Atlas, it would cost me about six hundred dollars. Six hundred bucks. That's uh, that's crazy. That bipod delivered to my door was fifty to fifty Australian dollars. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there who can abuse me and say that I'm a cheapskate and that you know I'm not American, so it, you can't call me unpatriotic right and there's a big difference between 50 bucks and 600 bucks <laughs> that's a massive difference you know what if they were like if a proper atlas was 300 dollars i'd buy it but for 600 you're just not making something that's worth 600 bucks i'm sorry you know sorry atlas that's why, that's why this company, whoever's making these things, is just got a roaring trade because, uh, and I know, you know, they've stolen your design and you're, you know, you're in, you're in your IP, your intellectual property and all that and everything. But look, listen, you know, you know, it, reality is reality and your product's too expensive. So I don't know where you're getting it made. You're, clearly you're making it, I don't know where you're making it, where people are paid, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, that's another segue that I didn't really want to get into. People, people, Atlas and people who love Atlas and patriotic Americans are probably going to abuse me for saying that, but that's the reality, you know. Money talks. Uh, let's see, the scope, mount, ring, but it's all in one. It's, there's a company called d and I believe it's American. And I can't say enough about these things. 
They are just excellent. I put these things on my rifles. There's a few different, like I've got um, on the Remington Long Range, I've got a, a two-piece configuration. It's not a, it's not a one-piece joint. Regardless of what DM, and I've got a few of them now, DMZs, they are just so good. Like really, one of the advantages of this one-piece setup is that everything's aligned, you know. When I put these things on my rifles and go to the range to sight them in, you know, you don't even have to light, laser sight them because they are just so, everything's just aligned, you know, and it's solid, you know, the, the more piece, the more complex something is, the, the more prone to failure it is. And when it's only one piece, well, three pieces really, but you know, it's a one piece setup. You can't go wrong with that. No, I, I just love it. I think DNZ make a fantastic product and it's so cheap. It was like what, 120 bucks. Yeah, you can't go past that. Uh, let's see, My, the recoil pad that I got for it is actually not, not for a Boyd stock. Oh, I can't seem to get, you know, yeah. I don't know what stories with recoil pads is. Uh, and I hate grinding them. Yeah, it's a real pain. Uh, and make a mess of it. Yeah. Uh, let's see, this is a, this is actually a, a recoil pad for a Tika T3. Very, very close. And I don't really care if it doesn't fit it perfectly, you know. Oh. Uh, the scope is a Burris full field E1, four and a half to 14. Uh, not really the scope that I want on it because, you know, i got, I got old eyes and uh, I'd really like to have my Delta Optics Titanium 4.5 to 30 on here because I do like 30 power, I think, yeah. Once you go to 30, you don't go back. Um, now, but because I've got my titanium on, on my long range, uh, yeah, this is the next best thing. I do have a, more, a couple more powerful scopes, but they're just, they're Bushnells, cheap Bushnells, and yeah. Bushnells rubbish. Um, now, uh, so this, I think you can get these now for about 600 bucks. I, I have to say, Burris make a fantastic scope. Really, really, really nice scopes very clear um, yeah the, yeah they're bulletproof Burris scopes really really are good they're a little bit chunky like my yeah they're a bit big um, my four and a half to 30 titanium is smaller than this well a fair bit smaller so yeah they are chunky but yeah they are good scopes and as far as accuracy is concerned you know I've, well, if I had the titanium on here, I'd be my grooves would be half what I've been shooting because yeah, it's only 14 power. Now, um, one of the things about this is uh, loads. I think this is a one in ten twist from memory. Sorry, but, yeah, it's one thing I didn't check up. Well, it doesn't matter. In any case, if you get this in two, four, three, the best projectiles, most accurate projectiles, and I've tried quite a few, this, which is why it's taken me a fair while, um, is 95 grain Sierra Match King, uh, with 32 grains of AR2208, Varget, and the 87 grain Hornady VMAX with 34 grains of Varget. Um, now, I did try, with the lighter projectiles, uh, the grips weren't bad, but yeah, they weren't that tight. So I slowly built my way up. I actually went from light projectiles to heavy projectiles. So I went to, I think it was 100, 170, 107 grain Match Kings and 108 grain VMAXs. And both of them were just 10 inch keyholes groups. <laughs> no joke, going that extra you know, what is it, from 95 grains to 107 grains is 12 grains. And by golly, oh, yeah, like literally no stability whatsoever. They were just, everything was just keyholes. They were just tumbling all over the place and just groups out to a foot, you know. So don't go over 100 grain. Um, 87 grain Hornady VMAXs and 95 grain Sierra Match Kings are the go. Now, what else can I point out about the rifle? Um, you know, the Howard 1500 is, it is, a, it is a budget rifle. 
And I've never had a problem with them, like, at all, with any, any part of them. Um, one thing that I have noted, that I have noticed, is that the bolt on this one, the lugs, at the back of one of the lugs, the lug opposite the handle, there is a bit of yeah, there's a bit of scoring, a bit of wear. And now, I've I've never had that on a on a Hauer. Like, this is the, like the third Hauer that I've had. I've never had that before. Um, it's not bad, you know, but it is it is noticeable. It's like I've got a ding in it. Yeah. Anyway, but you know, as far as accuracy. Uh, let's see, I'll just get some off camera and get some, this is, this is pretty much, you know, if I had the, the four and a half to 30 Delta titanium on here, these grips would be just, yeah, probably half this because it does make a massive difference. This is a hundred meters. So that one's, that was 95 grain serum match kings and that's 0.48 of an inch. Five, five shot groups. I do five shot groups. I don't believe in three shot groups. So I don't think they prove anything. Um, because I want to know what, and this, and the barrel, I don't, like, when I do my grouping, I don't, I like to vary it up. I like to just keep shooting and see what happens when that barrel does heat up. And this, and I've found that this actually, this rifle actually likes, a, not a smoking hot barrel, but it likes a hot barrel. It likes a warm barrel. Yeah, it'll shoot accurately with a cold barrel, but it likes you to warm it up. That's another thing. 95 gram, that's 0.62 of an inch. And it was sort of a bit of a fly there. Otherwise it would have been yeah, really tiny. Um, here's another one, that's a 87 grain VMAX, that's 0.47 of an inch. Yeah, so those two loads um, are definitely the way to go. You know, in, that round about that 90 grain for a projectile and this thing, yeah, it's really good. I, I will put a, a, a more powerful scope on this because it really does deserve it. It is, it is a, an a, you know, quite an accurate rifle. Um, yeah, I've really got nothing more to say about it, really. It, you know, personally, I don't think you can go past a Hauer, you know. If you're looking for a budget rifle, buy a Hauer. If you're looking for a really accurate rifle, buy a Hauer. If you're looking to make, you know, a full bore, money's no concern rig by Hauer. It doesn't really matter because they are really good quality, you know. The, the, again, the bolt design on these things is just, uh, I, you know, yeah, a really, really good bolt design, you know. They're strong, accurate, yeah, I, I love this rifle. <laughs> I probably will, I probably will get a Bell and Carson stock for it. Although I, this is a this is a very ergonomic and comfortable stock, so yeah, I don't know, maybe. But um, let's see. Oh, oh yeah, oh, I almost forgot. Just a little while ago, I've I've got a buddy in Canada who I used to work with, who was he used to be here in Australia, and he used, I used to work with him, and uh, he was bugging me because he was messing, he was hitting me with messenger. Well. Well, while I was intending to film this, so uh, I said I'd give him a shout out. So Scott, in I think he's still in BC in Canada, British Columbia. Uh, how you going, bud? Um, all you Canucks, Canadians, good people. Uh, yeah. So on that note, I'll say see you later.